Well, since our last interview, your father, Sonny Franzis, passed away. Yes. And he was over 100, right? He was 103. 103. I mean, we should all be so... We should all be so lucky to live to 103. You know, that's true, Vlad. But what people don't understand, you know, my dad went off to prison in 1970. He did 40 years out of the last 50 of his life in prison. And I tell people this, yeah, he lived to 103, but nobody would have wanted his life for the past 50 years of his life. It was that bad. I mean, look, you know, he lost uh, his daughter. My sister died of an overdose of drugs. My brother was a drug addict for, you know, the story, 25 years, eventually turned informant against my dad. He contracted the HIV virus. Um, my mother uh, died in 2012 while my father was in prison. The last years of their life, I can only describe as being ugly because my mom, you know, uh, held him responsible for everything that went wrong in her life, 33 years without a husband. And it was just, you know, one thing after another for him. So he suffered greatly those last 50 years of his life. But yeah, I mean, look, he was a fighter. He was strong. He had a strong will to live. And at least he died out of prison, which for me was a blessing for him. Yeah, I lost my dad last November, uh, I think shortly after our, our uh, interview. So um, yeah, it, it's tough. Sorry for that. Father. Yeah, it's tough, you know. And, and look, I looked up to my dad. We had our differences, obviously. We had a uh, a different ideology in the latter part of our lives. But, you know, I respected him and I loved him. He was my father. And for me, he was a good dad, uh, you know, growing up. I mean, I have to say that. What do you think your best memory of your father was? You know, the best memories were as a kid. I mean, when he was finally, or when I, I should say, when I had him around to just be dad, you know, you know, times when he would come and visit me, when I watched me play ball and, we went out to eat and times he would take me up to his uh, his business in the record business. And I, I met a lot of people through him at that time. The times we spent at the Copacabana. I remember, you know, my graduation when he threw a huge party for me in the back of the yard, put up a big tent, had big entertainment, had 500 people there. Uh, he took me to the Copa for to see Dionne Warwick. Me and, you know, my whole class it was probably about 50 of us. You know, we had ringside tables and, uh, you know, those are great, great memories of my dad. He was a good father growing up. I mean, I loved him. What do you think it was your worst memory? You know, um, I mean, seeing him, you know, carted off to prison for what I thought would be a death sentence, 50 years, visiting him in prison at times, you know, and the times when, you know, contract on my life that my dad went along with, I was told, even though he denied it. You know, those things hurt and, uh, you know, it's hard to, uh, to rationalize something like that. So those, those are tough memories. Yeah. I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, how's the funeral? You know, um, I didn't go, Vlad. I, uh, there was some trouble brewing in New York at that point in time. And uh, I paid my respects with him quietly when nobody was around. Okay, so you mean to tell me that going to that funeral might have caused a, a violent outburst somehow? Well, it's not that. You know, I didn't want to become the center of attention there. And um, there were some rumblings in the neighborhood. And, you know, I wasn't there for that. This was my dad's time. I wanted people to be able to pay their respects. I had seen him not too long before that. So I paid my respects very quietly to him uh, by myself. And I felt that was the best way to handle it. Yeah, I mean, there was some drama around my funeral, you know, my dad's funeral. Uh, then when I started speaking to some of my friends, a lot of them would tell me similar stories. Like you would think that funerals are the times that everyone comes together and hugs each other. But a lot of times that's when a lot of the bad feelings come out. The anger comes out, the, the old issues come out. And a lot of people don't attend funerals. Uh, you know, my friend Godfrey, who's a, a regular on the show, he didn't go to, to his father's public funeral. He went afterwards by himself. So, yeah, I mean, this is common and uh, it's unfortunate. It is, you know, and again, you don't want to become the center of attention. You don't want to take anything away from what people are there for. And that's to pay their respects.